Mark, did you want to make a mention on something? You got some new things going on in your life. Why don't you tell everybody what you're doing? Well, besides growing rose bushes, <laughs> no, no, I'm That's not growing rose joke. bushes. It's just I haven't uh, deployed in a long time, and so I'm I'm trying to settle in and find a new direction. And I was thinking about well, how can I serve my community and do something worthwhile while I'm in my hiatus? And I was thinking, my wife actually, the, the goddess herself, mentioned what about the Cameron Volunteer Fire Department? And I said, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. It's a very honorable idea. It gives you something to do. It gives you some structure, some direction. You're helping your community. So why not? I gave him a, a call. I met with the fire chief, Henry Hoslick. Great guy. And everybody over there in the volunteer fire department, great guys. And I said, well, Henry, how much do we get paid for this? And he said, like the Marine Corps. Marine Corps don't, don't offer bonuses. They offer the title Marine. I love that. <laughs> And uh, so the Cameron Volunteer Fire Department, it's a volunteer fire department. You go there and you serve your community without asking for any money. It's just you want to give to the community that's already given so much to us. And it, it's, it's a great thing that I did, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm learning a lot, getting responsibility, getting training on stuff that people just look at and take for granted. And then especially with the, the hot season coming on, today it's supposed to almost reach 100 degrees here in Cameron. Uh, this morning, we went out and put out a, a controlled burn that because of the atmospheric conditions wasn't so controlled and could have gotten really catastrophic. So especially with people still having the fireworks, the, the stuff that they didn't blow off on the 4th of July, maybe they want to do it around here. There's a few tips that I was just going to throw out there and also, if anybody wants to volunteer, or if they're interested in volunteering at the Cameron Fire Department, then uh, by all means, give uh, the chief a call, Chief Henry Hoslick at area code 254-697-4702. I'm terribly out of shape. How much in shape you got to be? Well, that's, that's a really good question. I believe that with law enforcement, uh, first responders, everyone should strive to do the very best they can to be healthy so that they don't become part of the problem on scene. Um, we don't have a physical fitness test that I'm aware of, uh, although I think everybody on the team would pass it with flying colors because everybody cares to be the best that they can be for their community. Um, you do have to be 18 years old. You have to have a clean driver's record. You have to have your own vehicle. And then you have to pass a, a brief interview with uh, the fire chief and some of the fire captains. But overall, as long as you're 18 and you're motivated to serve your community, uh, by all means, give them a call. Hey, if you can't even turn on your kitchen stove, I mean, if one's that uh, novice when it comes to fire, what do they have to know to be able to be a participant in volunteer firemen? Do you get trained all that? Can you just come on or you have to have certain criteria before you're able to be accepted as a volunteer fireman? That's a great question. There is not any criteria that I'm aware of, but once you do uh, volunteer and you go, you're on a probation status where you can actually learn from them. Mm -hmm. Every Monday night at 7 o'clock there's a meeting where we go over some training. Also they have a video library that you can w rent out and read each one of those discs in the video library costs a considerable amount of money and they need to be used so i've made it easy i've digitized it put it on a thumb drive so anybody can go and download it on their computer but a lot of common sense is involved in this uh, some of the things that people need to know about is to, if you're playing with fire be aware of your atmospheric conditions know the direction of the wind know the humidity Know about the uh, grass if it's dry or if the wind is blowing a certain direction because you sure wouldn't want it blowing towards your house. No. Then there's some other things about having an extinguisher available. If you don't have an extinguisher, have a garden hose and make sure the water is turned on and available. That'd be a great topic right there because I know there's so many different types of extinguishers out there for different things, chemicals, um, electric, paper products, that kind of stuff. And there's not only the different chemicals, but the different canisters that they come in and what's better than one and another, refillable, non-refillable, <laughs> right? That's absolutely right. I think that'd be a great segment to do because everybody should do it. That in addition to uh, smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. That's right. Okay, dang, I, I want to volunteer, man. Okay. As you should. 
Uh, you, you just touched on extinguishers. Everybody thinks about, okay, we, we need one in the house for sure. You got to have one and think about in your kitchen, you're going to have grease fires. So again, you need to know what, what type of fire extinguisher will put out a grease fire. You're not going to put water on it, right? Right, correct. That would be a bad thing. You know, I got a big deck on my house, so I have an extinguisher on the deck. I also have two garden hoses on the deck because I like my deck. You know, it's funny that you say that. I bought specific heavy-duty 100-yard um, hoses with fire, like firemen simulated uh, nozzles. Yeah. That are strictly meant. I've got the the faucets on the corners of the house that is strictly for emergency purposes. I hook it up and I got my own water supply on either side of the house just for that reason. Plus extinguishers, plus a big one near the wood stove. Are you talking about being preventive, uh, looking at it and taking preventive action? Yeah, I think that's what I was saying, yeah. That's brilliant. You must love your home too. Yeah, it's a tinderbox. <laughs> it go up real fast. Uh, one thing a lot of people forget though is a fire extinguisher in their vehicle. And they, they make them especially, you can go to O'Reilly's or... Uh, car quest you can get these you can get them at walmart and they're affordable and uh when you're putting out a car fire you don't want to just flip open the hood and then spray the engine compartment you can crack the hood and then spray from the outside that way you're not feeding more oxygen in there and you're smothering it from the outside let me tell you a story about that i'm in belton on this corner of maine and maine and sixth it was a gas station there and this guy He's got the hood open and there's flames coming out of his carburetor, right? And he's there with a rag hitting it and beating. I'm looking at my truck. I'm saying, you know, I need to get a fire extinguisher. That next day, I've got it mounted to the center floorboard of my truck now, a fire extinguisher, just for even in case it's for me or for somebody else who's beating their car with a rag or something. You know? Man, and I, I know we're, we're going a little long with this, but fire prevention, especially with the season right now, we have to be very careful of it. One thing about the fire extinguisher, if you're a good husband and you get your wife a fire extinguisher for her car, got to hope my honey is not listening, but you need to know where it is and make sure that it's fully charged and accessible. And as Clint Smith would say, for a self-defense tool, spray them with the white stuff and then hit them with the red thing. Okay? Yes. <laughs> there you go. Brilliant. All right. Well, man, that was... I'm sure we could keep going on with this. Well, we, we could, but I'm going to throw out the phone number again, so if you have a, a pen and paper... Give the fire department a call at area code 254-697-4702. And with the, uh, the season coming on, we need as many volunteer firemen as possible. And it's a really good, positive, destructive way to, you know, support your community. Very good.